Hey everybody, it's Jim, and welcome back to another lesson of Introduction to Corn Shell. This right here is the Unix command calendar. It displays the calendar for your current month. Now, if you want to view the calendar for a different month in the same year, you put a dash M and then the name of the month you want entered. And as you can see, it did display September 2008. Now, one more thing. If you enter a dash M and forget to put a value, forgot to put a value in, here's the correct usage for our program. We're going to be doing something like this today. We're going to learn how to take a corn shell script and require it to have a value after a flag. So here's our code and as you can see, I did change the description of the program just a little. So it now says that while dash x is optional, if you have a dash x, you have to enter a value with it. And one thing I want to show you, these are some examples, is that it's okay if you don't put a space between the dash x and the value, or if you do put a space in between the dash x and the value when you run the program. Either way is perfectly fine. Now, I also updated our usage variable to reflect that dash x now requires a flag, although the dash x is still optional. And our set x and set y are still set to zero. So, what's the magic that forces or that lets the getOps command know that we require a f value after we enter a dash x? Well, this is the old getOps command from our last example, and this is the getOps command from our present example. And as you can see, the only difference is that there is now a colon after the x, and that's what tells the getOps that if the person enters a dash x, they better have a value after it. So our getOps command will still treat the dash y the same way. It will still treat invalid flags the same way. It now treats the dash x just a little differently. And here's what happens. Putting a colon after a flag means the flag requires a value. Pretty straightforward. Now, if you put a value after the x, then our variable opt arg gets the value that you put after the x on the command line. And our flag x gets assigned to our variable flag, which was variable at the end of the getOps command. If you forget to put a value after the x, then opt arg instead gets the letter x, and our variable flag gets a colon. Now, if you enter an invalid flag, the invalid flag name gets assigned to opt arg, and a question mark would get assigned a flag. So if you want to think of it that way, that helps you remember then that's cool with me. So, here is our while statement. Once again, it just has that colon between the x and the y. It's actually after the x is the best way to remember it. And so now we have four possible things that could happen to our flag command, our flag variable. The four things that could get assigned to flag are if the person enters it, an invalid flag, a question mark gets assigned to flag. If the person enters a dash y, a y gets assigned to flag. If the person enters a dash x and they have a value after it, then x gets assigned to flag. And if the person enters a dash x but forgets to put a value after it, then a colon gets assigned to flag. So let's look at our case statement. Case 
dollar flag in. Well, the first one we have is x, which says that the person entered a dash x with a value after it. So once again, we set our variable x set to 1, so that way we know later on in the code that the person did enter a dash x. And the value associated with the dash x is stored in opt arg. So we take that value and we put it in a variable called x value, which is a variable name that you can choose and make up as you see fit. I just wanted x value. So now we have the value associated with the dash x stored permanently. Okay, the person could enter a dash y, and this is the same exact code from last time. The only thing we do is we set y set equal to 1, so this way we have a record later on in our code that the dash y flag was entered on the command line. If they entered in invalid flag, then flag is a question mark, and we do the same exact code that we did from our last example, which is just to print flag, and this will have the invalid flag name, is not a valid flag and we print out our usage statement. And then we exit out because we don't want to work on a command when the person entered invalid flags. Last, we have the colon, which says they entered a dash x, but they forgot to put a value after it. In which case, we print that they entered an x, because that's what will be an opt arg in this case, but it requires a value. And then we print our usage statement again, and then we exit out. Now, down at the bottom, after we get through processing all our flags after the done, we still have our if test down here. And the only thing I added to the x set is equivalent to one if test is that if it was, we also print out x value is, and then the, name, the value that was stored in x value. So let's test this out. We're just saying we're entering a dash x flag, and we're giving it a value of Bob afterward. And as you can see, in the case statement, we did print enter dash x, and this is from our if statement which just said that x set was set to 1, and the value that the person entered was Bob. And as you can see, that did match up. Now, let's run this with a dash y at the end. Everything's still good. We process our dash x, and then we process our dash y. And then after we're done processing the flags, we print that the x set value is set and the value associated with the x set value, or in this case, x value is Bob, which is true. And we also let the user know that y set is 1. Now let's test out what happens when we enter a dash x without a value. Well, see it prints out that flag x requires a value, prints a blank line, and then it prints out our usage statement and it stops right there. As you can see from the code, that's exactly what happens when you reach a colon in the case statement. We print that flag, in this case x, requires a value, we print a blank line, we print the usage, and we exit out right at that point. Now let's see what happens when we enter a dash y, which is a valid flag, and then a dash x, but we don't put a value. It does in fact process the dash y, because that's the first one on the list, then it hits the dash x without the value, and it does the same exact thing as we had in our last example. So as you can see, it does go through the same code again, 
and it exit out from the corn shell script right at that point. So it never makes it down to the processing that's done after we exit from our while loop, after we finish our while loop. We exit from our script right at this point.